also want to say for the record that I hope evolutionary psychology succeeds. We need it. It's a valuable subject. And, uh, but I, I suggest it won't succeed as a discipline until it, it adopts a more critical stance vis-a-vis -vis, uh, sexual selection. And I don't think that it's okay to, to talk about uh, females as uh, selecting for males in, this, in the way you were doing because, uh, especially because of the problem called the paradox of the lek. And it's, and, and simply put, it's that Is if... Is that L-E-K, you mean? Yeah, L-E-K, paradox we of probably the lek. We should probably tell people what that means. And a, a lek is a, a group of males uh, which are uh, hanging out together and trying to attract a female. But um, the, the paradox of the lek, which doesn't really have all that much to do with leks per se, is that if uh, females are continually selecting males for certain traits, like robustness, to use your example, then after a few generations of this, say 20 generations, all the males should have the traits that are being selected for. And uh, this rapid erosion under female choice of the, of the hierarchy of genetic quality that's supposed to exist in males is, is a problem that, that geneticists keep trying to solve. And behavioral ecologists t and, and evolutionary psychologists tend not to be even aware of the problem. But there's a large literature of a dozen or so papers now uh, in population genetics which concoct different mechanisms to regenerate the bad genes, the genes in, the, in your example for non-robustness, which uh, the females are supposed to be continually weeding out. And the maintenance of the bad genes that female choice is supposed to be weeding out all the time is uh, a serious problem in the theoretical narrative of sexual selection. And it leads to the paradox of the lek. And other times when you hear um, stories about uh, selection for uh, animals of certain traits, like uh, there's been there's discussion of selection for females so that they have certain traits, and I and I recently cited some stuff uh, about selection for uh, people to be um, uh, cooperative and and empathetic, which would lead to the paradox of uh, of what I call the paradox of the saint, where if if people were being selected to be all empathetic, then everyone would be empathetic after 20 generations, and if people were selecting if males were selecting females to have a certain trait, then they would all have that trait after several generations, which I've called the yeah, paradox of the crash. This keeps recurring, and you always need to keep regenerating the bad, the bad genes that, uh, to explain why the selection, even the preference, continues. Yeah, well, I, I mean, of course, there, there are explanations, and evolutionary psychologists kind of grapple with this and are aware of it, that, that, that can explain the preservation of diversity within a population, such as frequency-dependent selection and so on. But and there's also just the fact that kind of, you know, if you, if you, if you, if you measure things at a sufficiently fine-grained level, you will always find diversity, right? In other words, like with empathy, you're saying, well, why isn't everybody really empathetic? Well, you would agree, I assume that every human being who's normal has empathy and they do deploy it sometimes, right? So that is a, it is a species typical trait to have empathy and deploy it at least sometimes. And that's something, right? I mean, I mean you know, uh, and, and, and in the case of empathy, there, there, there's a, it's a very complex subject as to why people would uh, deploy it in different ways. And I think one point you make, which is certainly true, is that uh, in, in a lot of these cases, <clears throat> the pattern of deployment and the extent of your empathy is going to be shaped by uh, developmental experiences, for example. Uh, although in theory, the, the, the algorithm governing the development uh, may well have a Darwinian explanation, and evolution, you know, we think, we think about that kind of stuff too. But, but you kind of, you know, and in the case of the robustness of males, um, you're right, males are very different in their physiques. Um, 
It's also true, on the other hand, that there's a, a very clear and substantial difference between the size of the average male and the size of the average female. Um, 